Hey guys, here we are at Interlagos for a GT1 race where I'm going to break down one of the most action-packed laps I've ever been a part of. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and experience the chaos as I try to analyze what exactly happened during this lap. Enjoy. So as we start this first lap, I'm just going to go to Chopper View, and I'm going to focus on this 124 car. Is this... Uh, it's probably one of the greatest starts I've ever seen. Here he is starting in sixth place, and I'm just going to play this in full speed, and then I'm going to show you his on board as we start this lap. Tell me that isn't one of the most impressive starts you've ever seen. Someone starting way back in the third row, making it three wide around the outside of turn one and being able to get to the lead. Let's watch it on board. This is just such a bold move to make, especially on the start with cold tires, so let's see this. So that's just, uh, I mean, you could see just how patient he had to be with the throttle there and looking one more time in chase view. Just at this first uh, corner, you can see there are three wide going into the far chase view. Some guy on the very inside, he has to stay super wide. And you would have thought these guys taking the shortest line would have been able to manage it. But they were all just checking up and slowing down. And somehow he was able to make that move all the way around from sixth place into the lead. That was an amazing start. So now the second thing we're going to look at is probably what you already saw. But as this guy took the lead for the, took the move for the lead here... Uh, second place is stuck on his outside, he's blinking a little bit, but he stays a bit wide here, and here comes third place to the inside, making a dive, and just doesn't really, there's not really enough room there, I don't really know if there should have been left a space at this point in the corner, he's not really alongside, I put this on the 23 car for this incident, but he ends up turning second place, spins him across the track, and that gives the leader a huge gap to second place, so not only does he go sixth to first, but now he has this huge gap over second, so let's watch on board just to see um, a few perspectives on this. I mean, that's just about as blatant as you can get. There's really nothing that this second place guy could have done. He basically left what space he thought he should have left in the first place. So now let's uh, watch, see this guy going for the lead here to the inside. And then as he clears like this, uh, the green Aston Martin, here's his on board into the second corner. The only good thing that really come out of this wreck is the fact that very few people are involved. You can see as we put this in slow motion, really there's nothing he could have done, no reason to expect that. I mean, look at the gap that there is between third place. He's not expecting a dive bomb at this point. So yeah, nothing he did wrong, I don't believe. I feel it was an overly aggressive move. Went sideways, and the only good thing that I mentioned, this guy got involved, but he quickly got off the track, leaving the track open for a lot of cars. So very few guys collected, and the guy that really took advantage of this incident, just going way back here to... Uh, Rory way back in like I don't even know where this is like 13th place or something. Let's watch uh, his, his uh, start from Chase View. Everyone starts to check up from that incident, and we can see that that huge smoke cloud, he basically just carries on through, maintains the speed, gets a nice run, everyone here, and if you go to far chase, we can see that it almost went four wide for a minute here, you can see there I am, he tries to make it inside of this Aston Martin, and just for a minute, we're like four wide right here, so that's kind of crazy, lap one, four wide, he does back out of it eventually, now he's only three wide entering this uh, 90 degree left or so the 23 car is starting to back out a little bit and the red Aston goes a bit wide and things start to smooth out here so now we think okay everything's kind of settled first corner second corner chaos has all been resolved unfortunately that's not the case let's go over to fourth place battle you can see 
right around here and let's just watch this from a TV view for a minute. So yeah, looking at this frame, I'd say the chaos had not resolved itself. We got cars sideways here, we got a car stuck in the grass. And so now let's go back and really analyze what the heck happened to start all this. So this whole thing started way back here with the Corvette. He's trying to go alongside this Aston here, and this Corvette breaks quite early for this corner, tries to take the inside line, is a bit wide of the apex you can see you can make it around here he's kind of staying where everyone else is going though however unlike this aston ahead he really understeers on exit and really makes contact with this aston which clearly upsets the aston he almost clears the aston but still leaves a bit of space so this aston let's watch this on board just on this corner alone You can see how the Aston had to let out of the gas after that contact that was made. He thinks he's wide enough, and yet he still gets pushed wide. And he's, he's probably pissed at the, the Corvette for having making contact with him. So just looking in chase view here, looks like as he's getting back in the throttle, hard to tell if this is intentional or not, trying to push him wide either as revenge, or there's also a bit of net code there. So it looks like as a response for being pushed wide, the Aston gets on the throttle. Maybe he's just trying to be... A little aggressive, not to be that overly aggressive. Anyways, pushes the Corvette wide. Now he's onto the grass, and he's trying to rejoin. And just as soon as he may regains grip, he's turning so much left. Let's look at his steering wheel. Uh, you can see he's trying to turn left slightly to get out of the grass. Just not much traction at all. Trying to counter steer here, but now his wheels are locked left. And he's rejoining the track with, uh, let's see if we can look at rear chase. Uh... I mean, it's hard to tell where his wheels are facing, but it looks straight, but it's just the rear tires normally really sliding as they're regaining grip, and there's just cars there. That's not a safe place to rejoin. Hard to really say what he should have done at this point. I mean, there isn't really any clear place to rejoin, but there's guys side by side right behind him, and now let's see what happened to these guys. So the first guy to make contact was this Aston of Peter here. Let's just watch it on, his on board. And his race is over immediately as he gets basically, I mean, he has nowhere to go. He sees the Corvette ahead of him. He's trying to move away. He doesn't expect him to just come sideways barreling onto the track. But as there's this contact made, you can see it's immediately head-on collision. Both tires are destroyed. You can see the hood just gets launched up and gets back onto the track. But luckily he's out of the racing line. So the next car that's involved is, of course, me. And this is just so unfortunate. I feel like I'm safe at this point. I'm like a whole car, length, car lane away from the rejoin area. I, I mean, what I've seen this at all ahead of me. I see these guys battling up ahead. Just going in half speed here. I can see that they're probably going to make a bit of contact. I see that car pushed off wide. And I try to move a little bit over to the left here. I think I'm safe. And I just get tagged the smallest of it by the Aston, get turned sideways, and now I'll just play this in full speed. Just absolutely demolished in so many ways here. I'll watch my onboard in a minute, but just analyzing, first of all, spinning around 360, then sideways into the barrier. The nose gets completely thrown off. The right front tire and right rear are destroyed. See my wing flying off here. <laughs> we see another the Corvette that rejoined gets collected into us. And as we slide down the track, even if we got on the brakes, it wouldn't really do anything since our wheels are detached. See, again, the brakes not really helping. Then we get T-boned from here. And man, <laughs> I, I do not want to envy the person that was actually in that car so we finally turn around here basically on the apex and we have no control of the car at this point we didn't really have anything to do with the incident we just got collected and then once we're finally basically stopped 
trying to tow at this point. We got rear-ended and our rear <laughs> lights fly off. So now our front end or rear end, both of our tires are gone. And man, this is this is anything. This does not look like a car anymore, unfortunately. So let's see this on board in full speed now. Oh, sorry. Let's uh, go back to on board. You can see I'm trying to rev the engine at this point to see if I can bring it back to the pits, but it's pretty hard to bring uh, this car back to the pits <laughs> based on its condition. So now let's go back and see the other cars that were involved. Uh, if we continue to go back here, there were some guys that piled into us. We can see uh, this red Asta and these two cars get collected. Luckily, this this would have shoved all the cars off to the left-hand side. Unfortunately, this wall really bounces and brings everything back onto the track. This Aston just turns that uh, Corvette again, and then luckily it kind of escapes uh, pretty much... Uh just makes a small contact there, but the car that does get involved here is this uh, green Aston. If you recognize him, this is the same Aston that uh, caused that incident in the first cane turning second place. So let's see what happens to him. He almost escaped, but I guess you could almost call, call this karma for what happened to him early on. The fact that he spun second place, he would have thought, oh, did I escape that? Nope, you did not get to escape. He checked up pretty well, but just gets tagged by me, the Corvette, as I'm sliding down the track. Basically, does the 180 here, and not too much damage at this point, but then here comes the Corvette slamming through me right there, and looks like he lagged through me, which I got guess made this Corvette pretty lucky, but luckily you can see this Aston is pretty much able to continue on, not much damage. So now let's see that final car that seemed to just drive through everyone here. He's so far back and yet he didn't have, he didn't care to check up at all. Let's watch this from Chase View. I mean, that is just inexcusable in so many ways. At this point, you see a smoke cloud, you see a car sideways over there, and you can't think to yourself, you see a car on the grass over here, You and you see even more smoke. You can't honestly think, oh, I'm going to avoid this at this point. And he's, I mean, he's getting on the brakes now, but it's just way too late. I don't really know if he's getting full, oh, he is smoking his brakes, and he just slides right through, <laughs> slides right through the wreck. You can see just a bunch of debris flying everywhere and if I'm not wrong I believe that this yep it broke his right front tire the guy who had the most time to react to this wreck decides to slam into us breaks his tire and it's just absolute <laughs> absolute joke of a wreck man let's see this uh, incident from one more angle just trying to analyze everything all together just to see this whole mess come together and see my Corvette sliding across the track no control of its own, spinning that Aston Martin, these guys getting parked, that 21, we actually need to see us on board, and then here comes the Corvette sliding through the wreck. So yeah, let's just see this 21 car, we actually haven't looked at his on board yet. So here's the 21, let's uh, see this. It's crazy how so many of these cars basically escaped unscathed. It looks like this guy just got tapped at the exit of that hairpin and spins around. But this was just such a mess of a lap. And the only guy who could really be happy about it has to be Jacob here, who got such a great start again. Just going back, it feels like it's been a <laughs> forever ago that we talked about his start going 6th to 1st. But he does not realize how much he, chaos he avoided by getting that great start. So... Yeah, that's, that sums up pretty much the uh, lap right now, so amazing start, then we got that spin on turn two or so, collecting those two cars, and then after that you can see here's fourth coming along, and then this guy coming off track, collecting these guys, and I... I never realized that this corner and just the way the walls are oriented could create such a chaotic <laughs> wreck. But just the fact that that wall is diagonal right there, 
and kind of if there is any contact, which is rare, but the fact that it can push you back onto the racing line like so, that is just so dangerous. And so I don't think I've ever seen <laughs> a more crazy wreck at this corner in particular, but just a whole chaotic lap in general from the four wide that people were getting after that rejoin and the 12. What a avoidance from him. Let's just uh, see if we can watch the 12's avoidance. There we go. Since this guy, I mean, <laughs> this guy who got that four wide move, and I mean, he basically got all of his luck out on this lap, it seems, too. Yeah, so that basically summarizes the the lap and unfortunate finish for me. I thought things were going to go well, and uh, unfortunately they did not. So that basically uh, ended my race, and that's uh, how we'll leave it. So hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, yeah, let me know if you've ever had any more chaotic finishes like that, or chaotic first laps, I guess would be more appropriate. So thanks for watching, and see you next time.